G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Up's 4 Driving, we're going to show you how to jump start a vehicle because this one, yep, battery's flat, it's not working. Let's get into the video. Now the first thing I want to do is called the headlight test. So I turn on the headlights, I turn on the high beam and try and turn the car over. And if the headlights dim significantly like they just did then, well, that's an issue with your battery. But if the headlights aren't dimming, well, it might be a problem with the solenoid on your starter motor itself. Now we know it's just a bit of a flat battery because I left the headlights on. Well, let's try and start the vehicle up by using jump start leads. The first thing we do is grab our red lead and we put it to our battery positive on our dead battery. So this is the battery that isn't starting the car. And then grab your negative side, your black lead, and just leave it somewhere that's non-metallic, that won't conduct electricity. A piece of plastic is ideal. Okay, now let's head over to the good battery in the starting car. Now with our good battery, grab your two leads, put the red lead onto the positive side, and make sure it's nice and secure. Make sure you have a good contact there. And then grab your negative lead, your black lead, and put it onto the negative side of the battery. With that nice and secure, let's head back to the dead car. Now what I thought might be interesting was to drag out the mushy meter, the data logging multimeter, use a couple of current clamps and we can see exactly how much current was coming from the running car to the dead car and how much current when we start this car was coming out of this battery and into the starter motor. So what I'll do is I'll zero out both the current clamps. There we go. And the second current clamp. No worries. And we'll put this one onto our positive lead there and we'll set the data logging going for every second and the logging is now working beauty now when you're doing the final termination you don't want to do it to battery negative you want to find somewhere substantial on the engine preferentially without any paint or, or something like that on it not too much grease that will take the negative lead because it'll probably spark a little bit and charging batteries like this can emit a flammable gas, hydrogen gas, and you don't want that and sparks combined because that causes a fire. Okay, now we've joined it up, let's go and start the car. Now we're back at the car that actually works, let's start it up. Okay, and we're going to let this car idle and let the alternator in this car charge the other battery for about five minutes or so. Okay, so it's been running for about five minutes, so we'll make sure we're in neutral and we'll see if we can start her up. And there we go. Now we have to do the disconnection of the jumper leads. Okay, now the first thing we want to do is you want to take the negative away from that running engine. Because again, it can spark. And we don't want sparks created anywhere near that battery. We'll put it on a piece of plastic somewhere so it can't conduct any sort of electricity. Now let's disconnect the negative terminal from our running battery. Hold that in our hand so it's isolated. And then we take off the positive as well and we'll put them on the ground like this so they can't touch anything and we're finally back to the bad battery we'll take off our clamp because we'll stop the data logging and we'll take off finally the positive clamp and we'll put that isolated by itself now we need to allow the engine to run for a good 10 to 15 minutes to charge up this battery again using the alternator but what if it wasn't just leaving your headlights on how can we check the alternator? Well, we'll check that out next. And now we're going to perform a rudimentary test to see whether our alternator is actually charging our battery. So we've got a multimeter here. We're going to put that onto DC volts. No excuse for not having a multimeter, even if it has limited functionality because you don't know how to really operate it. But you can put it on DC volts. It costs all of $20, one of these things. And connect the positive to the positive side of the battery and connect the negative to the negative side of the battery. There we go, and we should be reading about 12.4 to 12.6 volts at rest. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start up the engine and we'll see whether the voltage rises. It should be around about 13.5 to 14 volts or thereabouts. So now I'll start the car. And there we go, our alternator is now reading over 13.3 or 13.4 volts. That's fine for charging this battery. Okay, so now we know our alternator is actually functional. It was just me leaving the headlights on to flatten the battery. 
Now let's check out those jump start currents in a little bit more detail. On the left hand side here we've got the current in amps ranging from 0 right to 250. Along the bottom here we've got the time in seconds. The purple trace will be the starter current. So that's the current from the dead car starter motor in the Land Cruiser through to the dead car starter motor. And the red trace, well, that's the jump leads current. So that's going from the running Zook right through to the battery in the dead Land Cruiser. And here's a couple of interesting things to note. Firstly, when we did that final termination, we started moving current across. So even though the Zook wasn't running, the battery was at a high level of charge. So the voltage was high. We had a potential difference and we started moving that current across about 25 or maybe 30 amps. When we started the Zook, well, it shot up substantially and it shot up to about 60 amps or so. Rightio. And then we're putting bulk charge back into that battery thanks to the running Zook. When we started the Land Cruiser, so this is the purple trace here. It went from zero right through to about 230, 240 amps, and then shot back down again. But the Zook was still punching in that current because it now had depleted the battery substantially in that Land Cruiser, the dead car battery. And not until we disconnected the leads did the Zook stop putting that current into that battery. And then, of course, we were getting current in from the alternator in the Land Cruiser. Now, if you like anything like mine, the next time you get a flat battery, you'll be hundreds of kilometers from home, probably in unfamiliar territory. It'll be nighttime, you'll be raining, and you'll be late. <laughs> so what I've done is I've put together a PDF file, which you can download and keep in your Google Drive or your Dropbox or whatever, even on your phone, and you'll be able to follow the procedure right from the headlight test, the connection, the starting of the other vehicle, and then the disconnection. I've even put a QR code up here, and there'll be a link actually to the video so you can watch the video if you have a decent amount of service this will be available on the website there's a link down the doobly do all right guys now if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you didn't by all means give it a thumbs down not once not thrice but twice thanks guys we'll see you in the next one